Welcome to Dublin. A warm welcome to you all, my travel friends. The Emerald Isle is calling us today and we're taking you on a journey to see the best places to visit in Dublin, Ireland. From literature to libations, history to the Haypenny Bridge, today we're diving deep into the heart of the Irish capital. So grab a cup of tea or perhaps a pint of Guinness and join us as we embark on this exciting journey. Head on in to Temple Bar. One of the places you have to visit in Dublin is the Temple Bar District. Temple Bar isn't just a bar, it is a lively area on the south bank of the River Liffey. It's party time here with several pubs and clubs waiting to serve you a good time with live music and fresh pints. No trip to Dublin would be complete without coming in for a pint of Guinness at Temple Bar and listening to some traditional music. This bridge is really busy because it actually takes you right into the entrance of Temple Bar, one of the most famous places here in Dublin. The Haypenny Bridge is a pedestrian bridge connecting the two sides of the River Liffey. The River Liffey cuts through the city and the Haypenny Bridge has long been considered one of the must-see attractions in Dublin. This was the first bridge to cross the river connecting the two sides of the city. When it was originally built, it only cost half a pence to cross, hence the name Haypenny Bridge. Now it's one of the top places to cross the river, thanks to its excellent location leading right into Temple Bar. No trip to Dublin would be complete without going to the Guinness Storehouse. Make sure you do a tour to learn all about the history and drink a pint or two. Touring the Guinness Storehouse is a rite of passage when visiting Dublin. It is literally the number one place to visit in the city. 20 million visitors have enjoyed touring this brewery, learning about the history and process of making the famous stout. Started by Arthur Guinness in 1759, Guinness has been a staple of Ireland ever since. Located in the heart of Dublin at St. James Gate Brewery, Guinness signed a 9,000-year lease to operate his brewery on the premises. Covering 50 acres, the Guinness factory is a major part of the city's history. The tour is very interesting to learn how Guinness is made, but more importantly, it ends with a full pint of beer at the rooftop gravity bar that offers one of the best views of Dublin City. If you want to take the experience up a notch, we suggest you upgrade to the Guinness Academy. It's the ultimate Guinness experience where you'll learn how to pour the perfect pint of Guinness in the Guinness bar and tasting room. And once you have poured your perfect cascade, you'll get a certificate to prove you are Guinness certified and you'll get to enjoy a delicious pint of Guinness. Thank you. I deserve this. We're here in the historic O'Donoghue's. Dublin is known for its pub culture and nightlife, and if you go to one pub, check out the famous heritage-designated O'Donoghue's. It's legendary for its live music and was home to the famous Dubliners for more than 40 years. And you can't come to Dublin without doing a pub crawl. It's a rite of passage to do a pub crawl in Dublin, and by the end of the night, everyone will be your best friend. Dubliners are a friendly group of people. Busy day, place to be. When you come to Dublin, make sure to come to the Jameson Distillery for a wee dram. Let's go. Guinness isn't the only spot in town to enjoy a grown-up spirit. Make sure to stop at the Jameson Distillery to learn about the history and story of Irish whiskey. Through its interactive exhibits, you'll gain a deeper appreciation for the craftsmanship and tradition that goes into every bottle. After your tour, make sure to stop at the Whiskey Bar for a shot of Jameson or a perfect cocktail blended just for you. Make sure you come to Trinity College. It's one of the most popular places to visit in Dublin and it's the place where you'll see the Book of Kells. 
The Trinity College Library is Europe's largest vaulted library. The old library itself is amazing with the long room housing 200,000 books. These ancient books are vulnerable though and construction is about to commence to safeguard the building. However, the Book of Kells will remain open to the public during renovations. The Book of Kells was written in 800 AD by a group of monks that was buried for safekeeping against the Vikings. The book remained hidden throughout the centuries and in 1600 it was rediscovered and sent to Trinity College where it has been ever since. While at the Book of Kells, make sure to explore the campus of Trinity College. It is Ireland's oldest university located right in the city centre and it dates back to 1592. It's considered one of the world's most beautiful university campuses, so it is not to be missed. If you find yourself in Merriam Square, make sure to seek out the Oscar Wilde statue. He was born here in Dublin and grew up in the house across the street and the statue has him lounging back in the park, surrounded by his quotes, looking at the place where he grew up longingly. Keep an eye out for Dublin's talking statues. 10 of the city's most famous statues have been given the gift of the gab where you can listen to them tell their stories through your smartphone. So we're heading into Sweeney's to learn a little bit about James Joyce and this amazing chemist. Let's go. Sweeney's is not just an ordinary pharmacy. It's a time capsule that takes you back to the days of James Joyce. This charming little apothecary was featured in Joyce's masterpiece, Ulysses, and it has remained virtually untouched ever since. When you step inside, you'll be transported to the late 19th century, where the shelves are filled with old apothecary bottles, the aroma of lemon soap fills the air, and the atmosphere exudes a sense of nostalgia. Make sure you go into the National Gallery of Ireland. It's just across from the Oscar Wilde statue and Marion Square. Founded in 1854, the National Gallery of Ireland is home to an impressive collection of over 16,000 pieces of art. With works ranging from the 14th century to the present day, it has an impressive collection of legendary artists. But that's not all. The building itself is a masterpiece with grand halls, stunning stained glass windows and exquisite architecture. Wandering through its majestic rooms is just as rewarding as admiring the art on the walls. Ireland has a very rich and recent history and one of the places to learn all about Dublin when you start your trip through the city is the Little Museum of Dublin. What I loved about this museum is that it has an eclectic mix of historic things that are, have been crowdsourced. So everything from their U2 collection to uh, the first Irish independent office and everything in between. So you really get a great feel for what it was like back here in the 20th century in Dublin. Now this is cool. Take a look at the view. If you are looking for activities in Dublin that give you a bit of an adrenaline rush, Kellogg Skyline Croke Park Tour is the perfect tour for you. Croke Park is the third largest stadium in all of Europe and you'll climb your way up 44 meters for a bird's eye view of the hurling field and fantastic panoramic city views. It is actually the highest open air viewing platform in all of Dublin. And you get a behind-the-scenes peek at the athletes' lounges, private boxes, and you even get to go onto the field. One of the best ways to immerse in Irish culture is to get involved with their national sports. At Croke Park, you can also visit the Gaelic Games Museum and walk through the history of the Gaelic Games. All right, I'm here, I got my hurley, and I'm ready to hit the schlitter and see how fast I can actually do it. So let's see. Woo! 21 kilometers an hour. Woo! For a little bit 
of Dublin's dark historic past. Make sure you visit the Kilmainham Jail. And the prison tour begins. It has a history about everything that went on in the uprising in 1916. It was overcrowded, it was horrible and horrific conditions. They executed hundreds of people at this jail, but it really was a place where Ireland's history was built. That was the start of Ireland gaining its independence. It would be awful to be incarcerated here. The living conditions were so cramped. A hidden gem in Dublin is Newman's University Church, located in St. Stephen's Green, which is a popular park for tourists in Dublin. It has a link to the jail, too. During the 1916 uprising, British soldiers established a machine gun post on the church's rooftop. However, today, this beautiful church modeled after the Basilica of San Clemente in Rome is a quiet escape from the city. Here we are in Dublin Castle. Dublin Castle is one of the most famous medieval castles in the world dating back to the 13th century. It's now a government building, but that doesn't stop the tourists from coming. There are two museums and some cafes, but most people just come to hang out in the gardens and relax on the huge lawn. When you're in Dublin, jump on a lazy bike tour to see the city. All right, everybody, we are here at the Lazy Bike Tours here in Dublin, just out of Temple Bar, and we're here with Q. He's going to be guiding us today. What are we going to be doing today, Q? You're going to see a wide variety of stuff in Dublin. You're going to see some of the big sites, and you're going to see parts of the city that you normally wouldn't see. It's kind of the hidden side of Dublin. These fully guided tours take you to all the historic sites as you ride easy on electric bicycles. Christchurch Cathedral was founded in 1028 and is one of Dublin's top attractions. It's also one of Ireland's oldest buildings. Just down the street is St. Patrick's Cathedral where St. Patrick himself baptized Christians 1500 years ago right at this site. Okay, the next stop on our bike tour is the Old City Wall. This is the last remaining portion of the old city wall from the medieval city. Glasnevin Cemetery is Ireland's national cemetery and the largest in the country. Spanning 120 acres and connecting to the botanic gardens, this is one of the premier outdoor spaces in the city. This is one very old cemetery. It just goes on and on with every corner that you turn. Glasnevin's design was actually based on the Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris and like its more famous counterpart, you'll find famous souls buried here such as Michael Collins and Daniel O'Connell. But Glasnevin Cemetery is not just about the famous figures laid to rest here. It's a place that holds the stories of countless individuals who shaped Ireland's past. This cemetery is officially known as Prospect Cemetery and it's Ireland's oldest non-denominational cemetery. There's everyone from politicians to poets, musicians and activists are all buried in this cemetery and it's really worth taking an afternoon to explore. Walking through its peaceful grounds you can feel the weight of the country's history and connect with the spirit of the nation. The cemetery is free to enter, so you can get a bike and come on up here. It's just about a 20-minute bike ride out of downtown. If you have a car, you can come up and it only costs two euro to park when you leave. Or you can take a guided tour to see all of the famous graves that are buried in this site. If you want more outdoor spaces, make your way to Phoenix Park. It's the largest enclosed park in any capital city of Europe. And finally, we leave you with the painted doors. In the 1700s, there was a building boom, but the problem was every building looked the same. There are many legends as to why the doors are painted, from combating uniformity to differentiating homes after a night at the pub. Whatever the reason, they make for beautiful architecture. 
The best places to view the painted doors are on Marion Square, Baggett Street, Leeson Street, and Fitzwilliam Square. And these are the best places to visit in Dublin, Ireland. As we leave you, enjoy our night out on Grafton Street and St. William Street. There are so many things to do in Dublin, you need at least three days to see the city. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click on that bell for notifications because you don't want to miss a thing.